And now here is David with his little cadre of men run out of the kingdom, hiding in the wilderness. And now we see what David was going through with the great fear that he had in Psalm chapter number three. Look at it. It says, O Lord, verse one, how my adversaries have increased. Many are rising up against me. What's he saying? He's saying, there are thousands after me. And they want to kill me. They want to hang me. They want to embarrass me. They want to shame me. They want to punish me. He said, thousands are after my life. That's one kind of fear. It's bodily fear that we have. The fear of health, something like of what we're experiencing with this virus. So many are just overwhelmed with fear. Young people especially, I've noticed, more than even older people who are more susceptible to it. Fear, fear. David was fearful of his body. He said, there are thousands of people hunting me down. They want to kill me, slaughter me, punish me. That's one kind of fear, is it not? Bodily fear, health that we have, well-being, dangerous times. It's that fight or flight kind of fear that comes over it. It's a good thing. But look at the other kind of fear, he says. Verse 2, many are saying of my soul, that's his personality, who he is, there is no deliverance for him in God. What does that mean? It means, David, you've got so far off track, and you're such a rebel, and you become such a scum as a leader, God won't even listen to you. You've turned your back on God. So you're, you're nothing. And Shimei, you read closely when David was leading Jerusalem, Shimei was over there. Ah, oh, David, you're getting what you deserve. You're like Saul. You've lost the kingdom. You're immoral. You're scum. You're an embarrassment. You can't lead. And they were hassling David. Think about it. Being booed, being forced, a revolution. And now he's fearful for his body, and now he's fearful inside. You know that kind of fear? A fear inside, you can't sleep. Nobody knows about it. You have that fight or flight emotion going on all the time, and it will eat anybody up. That happens when sin begins to reign in the life, a secret sin, unknown sin, a deadly sin. And that's what David was feeling. He said, boy, my soul, my, my personality, I, me, mine, mine, who I am as a human being, it is being attacked viciously. That's the trial he was in. Now I want you to look in the same chapter here at David's trust. In the middle of all of this, fear for his body, fear for his own soul, his own sanity, and then it says, but you, O oh Lord, David is praying, are a shield about me, my glory, and the one who lifts my head. I was crying to the Lord with my voice, and he answered me from his holy mountain. You, O oh Lord, David prayed to the Almighty, are a shield for me. You know, what kind of shield was this? You know, they had round shields they would hold and they would fight hand to hand with a little round shield. But this shield was not a little round shield. It was a, a big shield, about the size of a door. And it, the interesting thing, it was a shield that would wrap around you. This was a shield that would be used when they were storming a fortress. And they would take this big shield and the captain would lead and they would follow along with this big shield and then we see the fiery arrows would come and the spears would have been thrown and they'd take the hot burning pitch and pour it on them, our hot water, and said, keep on moving forward. As long as you had this shield in front of you and you were moving forward, it may mean your death, but God would shield you. But if you turned around, you had no protection, no protection from the back. 
It's a shield we use to charge and move out in life. And David is saying, in the middle of all of this, I am going to move forward, oh Lord. You are the one who shields me, protects me, defends me, as long as I'm moving forward for you. <laughs> 